Ow, got stung on the finger. Ouch! Whether you're a new beekeeper or an experienced beekeeper, nobody likes being stung. Today I'm going to give you tips on how you can reduce your chances of being stung. Hey everybody, David Burns. Thanks so much for joining me today. Good to be with you today. I'm going to give you a lot of good information today on bee stings, especially what do you do when you're working a hive, you're handling a frame, you've got a frame in your hand, all at once you get stung. What's the procedure? How do you handle that? Do you keep going? Do you run for safety? How do you remove the stinger? I mean, what do you do with the frame in your hands? There's so many questions. And today I'm gonna to actually show you a video from when I was stung and we'll walk through it step by step to see if I did it right. I'll show you one mistake that I made that caused it all to happen. <laughs> and that will help you not to get stung, okay? So stay tuned for the whole video. Yeah, I was working a hive, having fun, no gloves on, made, making a video for you, the last video that I made, and I got stung. And it hurt. And I'm gonna show you this clip of me being stung and what I did. Let's jump right into that video. Well, some of my hives last year were heavy on beetles. Ow, got stung on the finger because it was my fault. Let me pull that stinger out real quick. Scrape it. Alrighty. I'm sorry, my apologies. I just couldn't see. Oh, got that beetle though. That was worth the sting. Dang. That stinger landed. I don't think I got it out all the way. Ooh. That stinger landed right there on the tip of that finger. Ooh, that is a sensitive area of a finger. If I wasn't recording, I'd be crying like a whatever that means. Okay, so I wanna point out some things. Notice how I'm lifting up the frame here. And if you look, there's a bee on my left side. It's on my left hand. It's walking up the side of the frame. And notice how when I move my fingers just a little bit here, it gets underneath that little ear right there where the frame rests against the frame hanger wall, and that's where I pinch it. Normally, I tell people all the time to sweep your finger under there and sweep bees away, but I forgot to do that. Now, the next thing I want to point out, watch how I set the frame down. Notice I set it down. Now, this was in slow motion, but I set it down kind of slowly, and I've got it parked right on top of the hive. I didn't put it back into the hive itself. Now, it's not going to kill any bees because it's being held up. There's a little space between the top of the frames and the top of the box. Now, I can't stress enough the importance of actually taking the hive tool and scraping it out. You don't want to pinch the venom sac. You want to scrape it out. One more frame and I'm, I'm done. Now I could stop inspecting if they're stinging me, but they weren't. That's how you decide if you keep going or not. Need, some, need to smoke my finger, hide some pheromones, and then smoke the area here. All right. Still hurting, taking deep breaths. <laughs> not really. I can feel it, but it's not that bad. So I'm about to pick up this last frame. This is going to tell me whether, you know, how they respond. If they're going to sting me again and again, then I'm going to have to put gloves on, smoke them more, and completely stop the inspection. I think that's my first sting for the season. It always surprises me. That first sting of the year is like, dang. Nope, no stings here. And again, it wasn't a defensive sting. It was a sting because I... I squeezed a bee, so it did not affect the bees, but sometimes the pheromone is still on your finger, the alarm pheromone, and that's why I use my smoker to disperse or to hide the alarm pheromone so I could keep going with this inspection. Now, I'm going to give you some more tips on how not to get stung. In fact, I've got five tips how you can avoid or reduce your chances of being stung, but before I share those with you, look at this, a brand new Bobblehead David. I know, it's crazy. Sherry had another one made because I've changed over the years and she thought this looked more realistic like what I look like now. So new Bobblehead David's on the job today 
And of course, he's encouraging you guys to please subscribe to my channel. Let's talk about subscribing. No cost to you. It's simply a YouTube feature where you're watching a video and you kind of say, I like what the guy said. I want to watch more of his videos or his future videos. You hit subscribe button and that way YouTube will notify you each time I'm working really hard to make you a new video and I publish it. Boom, they'll let you know it. Doesn't cost you anything. It helps me out tremendously. So please click on the little subscribe button below this video. Click on the um, notification bell so you'll be notified each time I make a new video. Now let me share the five tips with you on how to uh, reduce your chance of being stung. Number one, choose the right time of day between 10 and 2. It needs to be, that's 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. It needs to be a beautiful day. It really does. Bees need to be foraging, working hard. They're distracted. They're not thinking about you. They're thinking about all that delicious nectar and pollen out there. Let's go get it. And then you open up a hive and they're like, yeah, whatever. Let's just go to work. So 10 to 2, good, good weather. Tip number two, always have your smoker going really well. So keep that smoker going. Have smoker fuel in your pocket in case you run out. Keep puffing it. Don't forget. Don't get so distracted you forget to puff it. And tip number three is all about your protective gear. I recommend that you certainly wear a hat and a veil. Minimal, you need that. You want to protect your face, your eyes, your mouth, your nose. You don't want stung up your nose or in your eyes. So always wear a hat and a veil, minimal. But, you know, it's good to wear other protective gear as well, like a bee suit, especially if you're brand new to beekeeping and you're kind of nervous about it. Don't be nervous. Just suit up to reduce your chances of bees stinging you because you're wearing protective gear. Very important, don't forget to tuck your pants leg into some boots or over the boots so bees won't crawl up your pants leg. And that's especially helpful if you're brand new to beekeeping. So tip number four is to be sure and smell neutral. I've shared this many times, don't go out there smelling like a gardenia patch of flowers or something like that, but don't go out there smelling like you haven't taken a bath in 15 years either, or you just got out from underneath the, working on your car and you got grease and oil all over you. Try to smell neutral. And then the final tip, tip number five, probably the most important one that you'll, I'll show you in just a minute at the, uh, toward the end of this video is work in slow motion. When you lift up a frame, lift up a frame slowly. <laughs> That's really important. I had fun saying that, by the way. So these five tips are really be good for you to reduce your chances of being stung. Now, I never say to prevent yourself 100% from being stung because we are working with stinging bees, but uh, you want to reduce your chances and these might get you by without being stung at all. I'm going to pop in here and encourage you guys to please join me for my live stream every Thursday night at 7 p.m. It is such a fun live stream. 59 minutes of more fun than beekeepers should be allowed to have. So join me. It's just going to be a great time this Thursday night. We always have some giveaways and I'm there to answer as many as your questions as I can in the minutes that we are there. So check it out. Here's the link right here. Yeah, and maybe you're kind of nervous about working bees. Maybe you're getting your bees this year. You're coming out of winter. You're going to have to be working your bees soon. And you feel like you just don't have the confidence that you need. Well, I'm pumped and excited to let you know that I made a video and it's really helpful if you're wanting to learn the ropes of how you do an inspection, how you handle frames, how you handle the smoker, how you handle the hive tool how you just make it all work out. And this video is so helpful. It's right here. Check it out. Follow me over here. I'll see you over there.